PV Power Up, serving photovoltaic contractors and integrators with practical information and answers. When you're designing a solar system, one of the most important things to avoid in your design is shading on the solar modules. So just to show what shading can do to your design and your system output, we decided to put together a small system out here in the parking lot with four Kyocera modules and a Sunny Boy 700. So right now we've got a gorgeous day in Indiana, a radiance up around 850, and we're getting about 475 watts out of this system. I mean, it's just a great production day for solar. So what does one little bit of shade do to this? If we shade just one cell on the modules, we basically see that there's a very tiny couple percent drop in the output. Nothing huge, but it does affect the output. Now, suppose something happens and two of them get shaded. That cut the output almost in half from where it was a few minutes ago. So I still have output and the bypass diodes are working by cutting off parts of the module, but now this weakest module is now the weak link in the whole production chain. Now if we just do three cells, I'm down to about 40 watts. I'm down to about 10% of what it was. So effectively, in the three bypass diode chains, this module is pretty much blocking the output from the other three. All right, we just tried single cell shaded. Now what about a whole row of cells? So I've taken out one whole row on the side, and when I look at the output, it's knocked it down 15 to 20, 25 percent by eliminating one row. Now if I actually take out two rows, it really hasn't changed that much because the one bypass diode started working for the one row shaded and shading the additional row really doesn't affect me too much more. Now let's see what happens if we change it to the other direction. So now I've shaded an entire row across the bottom. And I'm down to about 10% output. So even though over here I shaded two whole rows of cells, it didn't affect output as much as one row across the bottom. So what you're finding is how you orient the panels in your design can really make a big difference. If you can't avoid shading, you want to understand how your module performs so you can orient it where the shade will have the least amount of effect. All right, we've taken a long one and put it diagonally across just to see what it does. And if I look at the output here, I've cut it down to almost 50% of what it is without any shading. So there's technology today that you can put behind each module that will mitigate the shading effect of one module on a whole string. But the bottom line is, Shading is still shading. It is going to reduce your output. So if you got to avoid it, if you can't avoid it, you know, do what you can to minimize it. But number one, avoid shading wherever you can. And that just keeps it simple. What we've shown you here is just a few of the different experiments we've done as we've been out here, kind of really just enjoying a sunny day at the end of winter. Uh, we've run through probably 50 different shading situations on these modules, um, single modules, double modules, all across them. And we've also had out some thin film modules in a string of four also. And the unique thing about those is, for almost all situations, however much you shade, that's pretty much the drop proportionally in output. There aren't any special cases where three cells turn it off or six cells turn it off. Uh, it is much more forgiving, just like the vendors say. So we've been collecting a lot of these and we're collating them and we'll probably post the results to our website 
so you get a good idea of all the different variations and what you can expect. We would like to thank our sponsor, Innovative Solar, a national integrator and distributor of solar products and solutions. For more information, visit them on the web at InnovativeSolar.com.